Welcome back. The next two videos at least will be all about the drag component. This component is incredibly versatile and can be used to create all kinds of triggers, switches and puzzles. This puzzle cube for example. Each of its faces is implemented as a separate actor with a drag state component as its center. Let me show you the cube in action first. This face has a hidden spline along which the bead moves. The puzzle is solved when the player successfully moves the bead to the end of the spline and the next face is shown. This face resembles a clock. The riddle is solved when the player puts the hand to the right time. They can do so by turning the wheel in the center. And since I implemented the actor, I know the right time, of course. This looks exactly the same as the previous face, doesn't it? But there's an important difference. This time you don't rotate the wheel in the middle, instead you move the clock hand itself. This phase serves as an example that you are not limited to one dimensional movement while using the drag component. As you can see I can move the disc freely along two axes and place it in the field of my wish. So what does the drag component actually do in this scenario you might ask? In short, the drag component controls the movement of the movable mesh of the actor relative to all other meshes and triggers the reaction of the actor to the player's input via toggling a component or event dispatches. Please note, also it contains the logic to trigger other components, the drag component is still a state component. It does not implement the player interaction. For this you have the choice of three possible interaction components. One last word to the cube as a whole. All puzzle actors are attached to the cube in the middle, so they can be rotated together. However, the cube itself does not contain much logic. In the end, I decided to implement practically everything on the puzzles. So let's get started with the first puzzle. I started each puzzle with a simple plane. In this case, we want the movable mesh to move along a spline, so we need a spline. By the way, if you want to create an actor with a visible spline, have a look at the BP spline mesh actors, this lasers for example. Lastly, we just need to add the movable mesh for which I chose this bead. Now we are just missing the logic. For that we need the drag component. First let's take care of the tags. The drag component requires two tags to function. The component tag to control here tells the drag component which mesh it should be moving. Here we need to add the tag of the bead. And the component tag down here allows the interaction components to recognize the drag component. Next, let's take care of the drag type. This is a huge map which determines everything from how the drag mesh, drag mesh moves to what happens upon release. First, let's have a look at this first element. This determines how the drag mesh moves. As you can see, there are lots of possibilities here. We want to move along a spline, so those two entries are for us. And since our spline is practically planar, we don't need the rotation feature, so we choose spline here. Everything with snap in the name refers to what happens on release. We don't want to make it too easy for the player, so let's choose reset. This means the beat goes back to the start position upon release with a speed entered here. We need to go straight to the section set next. As you can see, it's an array containing by default two elements. These two elements are strictly necessary because they tell the drag component where the movement of the drag mesh starts and finishes. Uh, in our case, this is the start of the spline, which logically is at zero, and the end of the spline, which is at the complete length of the spline, which is approximately 200. Let's also provide the latter with the label solved and the set boolean set to true. True. Figuring out the sections can be a bit of a trial and error, either in the viewport or in game. So be patient and keep tr trying, just as we do now. As you can see, we can drag the beat along the whole spline, and upon release, it resets to its original position. 
but nothing happens yet. Let me show you about that next. The drag component comes with three event dispatchers. The drag changed single event fires whenever the state of the drag component is changed by reaching a new section. The drag changed constant event in contrast continuously monitors the movement of the draggable mesh and provides tons of info like velocity of the drag mesh. The snapping complete events toggles after the dragged mesh was released and finished the snapping process. For our purposes, the drag state single event dispatcher is sufficient. It provides us with this section strap. If we split it, we find the section name and the set boolean, which we can use to implement different code depending on which section the mesh is in. In our case, we just add a branch using the set boolean as a condition and play a sound at the location of, this, of the bead if the boolean is true. Now we start the drag. But as soon as we cross the 100 mark of the spline, our sound is played. This is because the drag state is always updated to the nearest section. So we have to do something about that. An easy way to deal with this issue is adding another section with the same settings as the previous section, very close to the finish of our spline, at 190 for example. Now, the sound should be played only when we cross the 195 mark. Now, the sound is only played when the beat is practically at the finish. And when we release the beat, it still resets to the start of the spline. One last thing. As you might remember from the demonstration, I made the cube turn as soon as one puzzle is solved to display the next. Let me shortly show you the setup for that. First, we need to go to the event dispatchers of the latch component, which we use as interaction component here, and find the released event. In our case, this event is very useful, since we don't want the player to accidentally solve the puzzle by just hovering over the correct solution. Now we need to ensure that the code is only executed when the 200 section is reached. We can also use the section set boolean for that. Next, we play this timeline I prepared to slowly turn the cube. For that, we need an instance addable variable here that we fill in the level with, the, with a reference to the cube. And in the level, don't forget to set the target variable to the instance of the cube. Now, as you can see, the sound is played whenever the beat reaches the end of the spline. And if I release it, release it there, the cube is turned to show the next puzzle, which I am going to explain you next time. See you there. Bye bye.